Welcome back. As we just heard from the DEA, a lot of deaths are taking place in the homeless encampments of Southern California as it relates to fentanyl abuse. Recently, a federal judge, as a result of a lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles, ordered an audit of all the money being spent to address the homeless problem and to redirect that money or some of the money to an effort to get people off the street now, as opposed to the building the housing first policy, building a unit for a homeless person and then talking them into getting help for their uh, mental illness or their drug addiction. The legal counsel for the Los Angeles Alliance for Human Rights, which brought the lawsuit, is Matthew Umhofer. He joins us from the L.A. Arts District. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time. So what is the point that your group is making when it comes to the housing first policy that the city and the county and the state has adopted uh, as it relates to, to solving the homeless crisis? One of the reasons why we brought this lawsuit was precisely because of the failure of the housing first model. It takes too long. It costs too much. And meanwhile, people are suffering on the streets every single day. One of the pieces of our lawsuit is challenging the housing first model. It's certainly wonderful to build housing. Housing is a long-term solution, but in the short term, people are dying. Five people are dying a day in Los Angeles. We need to get people help now. That's why one of the things that we're pushing for, in addition to the housing piece, is a dramatic increase in the amount of shelter, and that's what we've got the city committed to at this point as part of our settlement. What was the Constitution, what was the legal basis for your lawsuit? Well, one of the things that we had was the city and the county failing at a constitutional level, both failing people on the streets and failing the community. The members of the community were affected by homelessness. So we brought claims under the U.S. Constitution for essentially a state-created danger, which is that the state has the, the city and the county by its policies have created this real danger to people on the streets and people in the community around um, around homelessness by not serving their constitutional obligation. There's also the issue of there is a, the county has an obligation to provide for indigent people and that obligation under a statute, you, the county has been failing at at a constitutional level, especially in respect with respect to those services, those mental health and substance use disorder services that are so desperately needed for people on the streets. So that was part of the constitutional basis on which we brought the case. So the Supreme Court later this month is going to take a look at a lawsuit uh, that uh, a, a Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal decision, uh, which in, keeps cities from enforcing no camping laws. Essentially, uh, the, the, the Ninth Circuit had said the enforcement of those against the homeless represents cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, let me ask you your, your organization's take on that. Have, have you filed a, a brief on that? Uh, do you have you have skin in the yeah. game, I would I would assume? Yes, we have. We filed an amicus brief, and this has been at the heart of what we've been trying to address, which is that the Ninth Circuit's decision, well-intentioned though it might have been, created a paralysis within their cities and counties around enforcing the laws against camping. And so that is a tool that every city needs in its toolbox in dealing with this issue. You can offer beds, you can offer services, but there are, under certain circumstances, there is, under certain circumstances, a justification for enforcing the laws around camping and saying, you cannot camp here. We're going to create spaces for you to camp. You can come inside through these shelter or these housing options. But we do need to send the message that you can't stay here in these places near schools and daycares in these unsafe places. And by doing that, we're hoping and if the, the Supreme Court can revisit this decision. We're hoping that this empowers cities that have been paralyzed by this decision to begin enforcing their laws while continuing to build out the shelter and the housing and the services that they need. Right. Progressives say you're criminalizing homelessness. Absolutely not. One of the main things around our lawsuit was a focus on people who are suffering on the streets. We want, and that's what we've got right now, we've got city and county commitments to extraordinary amounts, billions of dollars in beds, billions of dollars in services. That's what we're focused on. But every city and county needs the ability to enforce its laws. I think every voter, most of the voters in the city of Los Angeles understand that the lack of enforcement of laws has created this, what we're seeing a few blocks away from where I am, which is where Skid Row is, where people are living on the streets and they're suffering and none, nobody wants to see them suffering. This is not about criminalization. It's about compassion. Who's behind this? Uh, business groups, I, was, I would assume? 
It's a real coalition. We have people who are living on the streets who are plaintiffs in our case, who are members of the Alliance. We have community members who live in affected areas. We have people who own businesses and property. Um, it is truly a, a coalition of all the kinds of people who are affected by homelessness in Los Angeles who see the failure of government and want a different approach. And we really want to support the mayor. We want to support the Board of Supervisors in being successful on this. But it's that success is going to come through accountability, the kind of judicial court accountability that this case has brought to the table. Uh, so this case, you have um, you have prevailed in court up until this point. Uh, what's next? We're going to keep holding the city and county's feet to the fire under the agreement. The city and the county have made billion-dollar commitments for services and beds. But for the next four years, the city and the county have milestones and deadlines they need to meet. And that's designed to make sure that we're visiting accountability that's been lacking. Voters, for whatever reason, haven't been able to hold our policymakers, our politicians accountable on homelessness. We're here to bring that accountability through this case, holding them to the commitments they've made and making sure that they meet those commitments or face consequences. Matthew Umhofer is the attorney representing the Los Angeles Alliance for Human Rights, uh, which sued the city of Los Angeles seeking for uh, transparency in how they deal with the homeless crisis and a, a different approach. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you, Conan.